Thanking my daughters who are here with my grandson. Stand up, please. They hate when I do this. Thank you for being here. Some of you know there was a little secret. Somehow it got out. I got married this summer. And even though Major is not here, I want to thank him and I want to thank my daughters and my grandson for always being so willing to share me and my time with our community and our children. So thank you so much for being here. And then I have to thank our Board of Education. I mean, they work tirelessly. They work hard on behalf of all of the children and the staff in our district. So I would like to ask our esteemed board members, and we even have one of our former members here, our former board president, Mr. Lou Petrucci, is here with us today. If you would stand and if we could give you a round of applause for the work that you do on behalf of our children. It's not easy. And my goodness, were you treated today by Jalen? Or I, I almost feel like I should call him Dr. Shaw because I, I see that in his future. Jalen, wow, what a welcome. Thank you and thank your beautiful family uh, for being here today. I see your dad is here. Are there other family members who are here with you? Mom is here. Thank you. Thank you for this gift in Jalen. He is a fine example of what our Buffalo Public School scholars are like. Thank you. And you know, we intentionally started our program today with our students, with our students because that is why we do what we do. It is about our children in the Buffalo Public Schools. It's not about one person or any group of people. It is about our students. And so I wanna thank you, Jalen, and our presentation of the colors by our Hutch Tech JROTC team. Thank you. I, I never had the opportunity to present colors, but I think it takes an awful lot of organization, discipline, determination, and I, I am not sure that if I had to, something wouldn't go wrong, and, and I probably would have dropped one of the, the flags or something, but you all do it so remarkably Thank you so much for being here with us today. We appreciate that. And then as I was backstage, I heard this beautiful voice and we were gifted this morning with singing from Mrs. Karen Saxon, who is one of our vocal instructors and I can see her team at City Honors so proud. They like, uh-huh, yeah, she, she works at City Honors. Um, she is just renowned throughout our city, our state, and even nationally. If you don't know, Google her. 
She's well known and very well respected. And we appreciate that she took time out this morning to be with us to share those beautiful renditions. No, I got a lot of thank yous, but I got a lot of folks in here who I appreciate. And I said I would take a pause this morning to make sure that they know that they are appreciated. So I'm in a room full of leaders. And so we all know that we are only as good as the team that we lead. I have an awesome cabinet and division head members that work with me. They get into my space and all of my crazy ideas that I have, they're right there with me. And they say, we got you. I would like for our cabinet members to stand so that you all can see who behind the scenes does a lot of the hard work. Please stand cabinet. Thank you. I am so fortunate to have them uh, working with me. Our building and our district leaders, what a mighty job you all have, especially in today's times. Your work is deep and your work is hard and the thank yous are far and few between. And it can almost feel like the smallest of air get highlighted real quickly. But I wanna just say to you today that your leader, your board, and the cabinet and division head members see you. And we appreciate, we appreciate deeply all of the hard work that you do on behalf of our children and our families. And today I just needed to take a moment to publicly say that to you. We do appreciate the work that you do. Now, I know we have in here today some parents, some grandparents, aunties, uncles, caregivers, advocates. We appreciate you. And we need you. We need you in a big way. And though we may not always agree, we need you. We need you desperately to help to inform, guide, and support our work with your children. Because in order for us to continue moving this district the way that we have been in the right direction, we have to all work together. We're very fortunate in the Buffalo Public Schools to have a group that's called Parent Congress Leads. I see that we have some here today. If you would just stand up so that we can recognize the work that you do. You all have your own children and families, and yet every day, every day, you advocate for children other than your own, and you don't get paid a single penny. And we appreciate the work that you do. Now, you know what time it is. It's getting ready to be Bill's time, right? And we in Bill's country. Bill's mafia, baby. So you know that, you know, with football, there's always that important secret factor and they call it the 12th man, right? That is the secret weapon, the fans, the village, if you will. And I say, you know, we're, we're in BPS Mafia too right now. And you all are our secret weapon. You are the 12th man for the Buffalo Public Schools. And every single one of you are important because you show up over and over and over again. No ask is too much. We ask and we work together and we find ways to get our children what they need. You also don't get paid to care about our children. I recognize that and I appreciate each and, excuse me, every one of you. 
I want to thank today, the governor's office is represented. We have our wonderful majority leader here with us today who brings home the bacon all the time, the Buffalo Public Schools. We have our senator today. We've got assembly members, the mayor's office, the county executive's office, our wonderful common council office represented, the comptroller's office, legislators, and just community folk. We've got our college presidents represented. We appreciate you. We've got pastors. Lord, we all need a prayer sometimes. We got pastors and reverends here today. You know, we've got community-based organization partners and CEOs. And the thing that we all have in common is that we care about the children in this district. Jalen, you hear that? We care. We care deeply about the children in this district. And so I want to thank you for your voice. I want to thank you for believing in the work that we are doing and keeping us uplifted all the time. Our village is strong. I don't believe she's here with us today, but I need to give a shout out to Dr. Bonnie Duran. I mean, we're on Buffalo State University, university campus. And this campus, thank you, Senator Ryan, for this, will be home to Leonardo da Vinci High School in September, 2026. You heard it here. You heard it here. I feel very welcome on this campus. Most all of us have some connection to Buffalo State University. So I appreciate your patience and letting me thank everybody. I hope I didn't miss anyone. If I did, please charge it to my head and not my heart because I certainly appreciate everyone in this room. But now it's time for me to talk a little bit about the incredible journey uphill that we have been on for the last couple of years in this district. You know, there's a little book that I really love. I loved it as a child and I still love it today. And it's called The Little Engine That Could. And it's about this little engine that had a long line of cars to pull up a hill. And the load was so heavy that the train broke down before reaching the top. The terrain was difficult. The weather was bad. It was rocky. And it just didn't seem like that little engine could get ahead. The engine would move up one inch and fall back two. But in spite of this, that engine was determined to not give up. No matter the difficulties or those folks who are always on the sidelines, you know who I'm talking about, on the sidelines, laughing, ridiculing, telling the engine, you know, you're crazy. You'll never make it up. Your load is too heavy. That little engine had faith, had faith and refused to listen to the naysayers. She stayed optimistic, she kept persevering, and she believed with her whole heart that she would get up the hill. She just kept pushing forward. She kept saying, I think I can, I think I can. Well, board and village, we are that little engine. And we are going up a street, street, uh, steep hill, steep hill. For the last two years, we have stayed united. We have stayed encouraged. And we have stayed optimistic about the brilliance of our children, the excellence of our staff who teach our children and about the stellar leadership of those leading our children. 
This community has continued to wrap their arms around our children tightly, praying, protecting, and watching over them. And guess what? We are gaining steam and the train is moving. I think I can, I think I can. We're moving to, I know we can. And let me tell you why. Our journey started in 2022 when we went to the community to hear the voice of the community's hopes and dreams for the children in the Buffalo Public Schools. Our next generation, our most precious gems. And we got an earful and that earful was turned into a community inspired strategic plan that we call five by 2025. The community got it right. They had it spot on. We focused our work around this framework, which included five areas. And those five areas are eliminating opportunity gaps for our children, ensuring that all children have access to educational excellence every day in every school and every classroom, prioritizing safety and security every day on all of our campuses, amplifying all voices and cultivating trust with this community and activating new partnerships. That's our five by 2025. It's a framework that is child-centered, it is family-centered, and it is community-focused. But the framework needed more. It needed some concrete goals, some specific, measurable, accountable, reliable, and time-based goals. And this is where my board stepped in. Board members came in in a big way this last year. And our board established a commitment with some national consultants who work with the Council of Great City Schools, which is a well-respected coalition, and they represent 78 of the largest school districts across our nation. Buffalo Public Schools belongs to this coalition. And they've been working with our board to focus their work around governance, student outcomes, and goal setting. As a result of the board's work with the Council of Great City Schools, the board charged me last year with some SMART goals that aligned perfectly with our five by 2025 framework. They wanted me to ensure that our third graders would increase their reading proficiency as well as their math proficiency. These are goals that I had from day one. I said it publicly, want our children reading. It's a game changer. But when they came to me and said third graders, I thought, uh oh, oh boy. Third graders, the cargo on that train got two times heavier. And here's why. That's a beautiful, wonderful group of seven and eight year olds filled with promise and opportunities, but who also present with some challenges, no fault of their own. These challenges include language barriers. I know I'm preaching to the choir. Temporary homelessness, classified with disabilities, poverty, living in areas that are food and medical deserts. So it's difficult for them to eat healthy, to get the medical attention that they need. So I know the village is saying, okay, but all of your children have these same challenges. Why did the load get heavier? Well, these are the babies who were in pre-K when COVID paralyzed our country. And these are the children who went from being in structured schooling to remote learning to hybrid learning. Have you ever tried to teach 
a four-year-old phonics and how to pronounce a word while wearing a mask. It's almost impossible to do. Very difficult, and that's just one skill. These children during their foundational years lost two years of critically important learning. So you say, okay, but again, there were other groups of children that had these same concerns. But the board upped the ante and they said, not just all third graders, but we want you to focus in on the neediest, the neediest third graders, those who are so economically disadvantaged. And that was intentional because in our framework, what we promised to do, what the community wanted us to do was to ensure equity for all in all that we do. And so we know that if we raise up those that are most needy, all of the others will get it. They will get it too. And so when they said that, the load, the load, the load got heavier. So we set some goals, some smart goals. And the goal was that we would raise our third grade economically disadvantaged group of children in one year on a Dibbles assessment from 33% to 39%. Whew. It's not easy when you're talking about moving hundreds of a population to move them six percentage points. And in mathematics, in 2023, our third graders scored at the end of the year on an iReady assessment at 13% proficiency. That's low. And none of us were happy. And so the board said, we understand. We understand COVID. We understand the challenges. We understand you can't go from the bottom of the ladder to the top. It's a step process. So they charged me with moving in one year our third grade economically disadvantaged children from 13% to 15%. It's growth. It's growth. Now, this is where I need my 12th man to come in. And when I say this, I need some cheers. Because we did it, y'all. We did it. 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 We, we, the village, we did it. And not only did we meet the goals, but let me tell you how our children show out every now and then. We exceeded the goals. We exceeded them. These babies who are the most needy group of children in our district did it. They did it. And listen closely, everybody, because I don't want you to miss this. I don't. So for those of you that do hashtags and tweets and all, run till this. <laughs> By the end of the school year, last year in June, when it came to reading on Dibbles, remember, we were moving from 33% to 39%. That was the goal. But our children cruised on by that 39%. You know how we do. We met 40, 40, 40%, 40% 40 of our neediest third graders now ended the year proficient in reading on our Dibbles assessment. And that would have been enough for me to do a little cartwheel up here if I could, if I could. But remember, we had a math goal too, to move from 13% to 15%, I could drop the mic right now because we cruised by 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I could keep going, okay? Our children reached 21%. They moved from 13% to 21% in one year. Y'all better give it up for these babies. That wasn't easy. That was not easy. I 
think I can. I know we can because we did. We did it. We did it, Village. You all helped us to prove that regardless of the hurdles and the zip codes and the race and the language and the disability, and I could go on and on and on, what our children can do when we all stay united, we put forth hard work, strategy, fortitude, determination, perseverance, purpose, old-fashioned grit, and a little bit of mother wit. We have proven what can happen for our children, and I'm so proud of them. Now, you know, we have many me members of the media here with us today, and I want to thank you so much for being here with us today. This is a story worth telling. And on today, August 28, 2024, I am really hoping that our media partners who are also a part of our village will take this opportunity to report on the remarkable job that our children and our staff accomplished this last year. Now, <laughs> whew, I get goosebumps. While I'm sharing good news, I mean, I might as well keep on going because we have more chapters in our book. Now, I watched last week the Democratic National Convention and whoever has some connections, I'd like to go one year, be nice to you know, just be, it was exciting, I watched it. But there was one thing I heard from the UAW president, Mr. Sean Fain, who quoted Nellie. And he said, whoo, it's getting hot in here. And I'm feeling like that today. I'm fired up. I am excited. I am energized for our children. So I'm going to start right here with our littlest learners. We have a three Y program, three year old program in our Buffalo Public Schools. And we call it the Little Scholars Program. I wanna thank David Rust from Say Yes Buffalo for having the vision, having the vision and the fortitude to help us to implement a program for three year old little learners. huge, huge. It's a game changer. It's a game changer. And it's free, free of charge. And it exists in our Buffalo schools. It's helping to close opportunity gaps. Remember that five by 2025, that was one of our first tenants that the community said they wanted for us to close opportunity gaps. And it provides our beautiful, sweet littles whose brains are like little sponges with equitable opportunities to improve and develop their vocabulary, foundational and pro-social skills in the safety and structure of our Buffalo public school buildings. In addition, they're fed breakfast, a nutritional lunch, they're able to receive medical support and counseling support, and they are taught by certified teachers. Did I mention it was no cost? I don't know, because I'm kind of excited. Okay, I'm excited. Okay, so, you know, as we continue to up the ante and move up this hill, we are gaining traction and we just keep getting better and better. And this year, our little program of scholars will move from six to eight. We will have eight programs in eight of our schools and the schools are Hillary Park, School number 27, the Dr. Georgie Blackman Early Childhood School 54, our Early Childhood School number 90, Southside Elementary School, West Hurdle Academy number school number 94, the Stanley M. Mikowski Early Childhood School 99, and the two new ones this year, one will be at the Frank A. Sedita School number 30, the other 
at the Harvey Austin School, number 97. Principals of these schools, get ready. Get ready because our babies are coming. And for the record, I just got to share this too. I'm in my bragging rights mode today. But for the record, 100% of the three-year-olds who were enrolled in our little scholars program are all ready enrolled in Buffalo Public Schools pre-K programs. We are not playing. The assignment is understood. I know we can, and I know we will. Board member Shooter, I know this is near and dear to your heart, and I know this makes you happy to hear that we have a three-wide program that is expanding, and the children are enrolling in our pre-K programs. So now let me jump to the other end of the spectrum. Went from three wide to our graduates, our 12th graders. You know, I keep having to dispel this rumor, but it's okay, it's okay, that our students are graduating from high school, not college and career ready. I'm gonna say it again, family, because I'm in a safe space. Our BPS students do not get a special pass when it comes to meeting graduation requirements. They are the state's requirements. Our children take Regents exams just like they do across New York State. Our principals, assistant principals, counselors in high school work really, really hard with our children. So I want to stop the false narratives. I think there are children across our state that take placement exams when they get to college that need extra support. It's not a Buffalo thing. It is not a Buffalo thing. Our children meet the graduation requirements. So let's just say that. And what's the evidence? Well, glad you asked. <laughs> In June of 2024, our graduating seniors were awarded $6.3 million in scholarship money. They're not just giving that money away, y'all. You have to earn it. You have to apply. You have to be qualified for it. There are rigorous requirements, and our children went after it, and they got it. So, board member Rivera, isn't this a great thing? It's a great thing. Also, more than 2,300 of our children took advanced placement courses last year. And more than 2,100 children received at least, not just one, but I'm saying at least one college credit. I know that our families appreciate this with the rising cost of education. But beyond that, it shows the tenacity of our children and teachers. Board member and Vice President Evans Brown, I knew you would appreciate that statistic. I knew that. When it came to our fourth grade children, approximately 1,800 took the gifted and talented program assessment. We opened it up so that all fourth graders could take this assessment. We didn't want to labor parents to say, well, if you know enough about it to go down to placement and apply or go to your school counselor, nope, we opened it up. We wanted to offer it to every child in the fourth grade. And you all know how Aretha Franklin spells respect, you know, R-E-S-P-E-C-E-T. Well, the way that we spell equity, I won't sing it, but E-Q-U-I-T-Y, that's what we're about. I know we can, right, President Kotman? I know we can. You brought equity as a common term to the district, we heard it, we live it, and we breathe it. It is about equity, equity, equity. So I know you appreciate that. And more than 2,000 of our eighth graders were accepted into competitive, criteria-based high schools. Shout out 
to those principles of middle schools. Well, you know, that's not an easy grade. That's not an easy, easy group of students to, to lead. But more than 2,000 of your children got in to criteria-based competitive high schools. And one of our board members had a son, has a son, who's one of those students. Board member Makosi, I don't believe she's here, but she's live streaming. And her son is one of those students that got in. We are not here to play. Education is serious and we are serious about it. So now you're hearing it here first. The community asked for, and we heard the plea to please create a financial literacy course. <laughs> Equity, uh, it's in our high schools this year. It's in our high schools. A financial literacy course. Remember tenant four, activating the voice of the community. We heard it and we responded to it. So we hear your request and we are working hard to deliver to you. And remember, I spoke about the community wanting us to close community caps, gaps. Well, remember, board member heard last year, our district debuted a district-wide junior varsity and varsity wrestling team. We did that. We had 34 athletes in grades seven through 12 from 13 different schools. And guess what? It's getting hot in here. It's getting hot because our BPS wrestling team clinched third place first year in the New York State Wrestling State Championship. I know we can. I know for sure we can. And then we have a STEM program. I know I'm bragging a lot, but we don't often get to tell the story. So I got to tell the story today. Got to tell it. You know, this STEM program is nationally renowned and it's named after the Apple co-founder. You know how big Apple is? How many of you all got Apple phones right now? It's big. Steve Wozniak is a rock star and he's working with our district. And we have children from kindergarten through 12th grade that are participating in robotics and 3D printing and drones and coding and animation and all these things. You tell me another district in Western New York that has kindergarten through 12th grade children doing it. I'll wait. Okay. All right. Buffalo is on the move. It's on the move. So I'm very proud of our WAZED program. I'm told that the students from the International School 45, little school on the west side, well, not so small, but it's got probably more than 50 languages in that school. And those children built rockets participating in a statewide competition. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I couldn't build a rocket. I'm just telling you, I got to admit, you know, I know what I can and what I cannot do. And I don't know if any of you are going to admit it, but it can't be easy building rockets, you know, but we did it. And, you know, Vice President Scott, he would appreciate that 23 of our Buffalo public schools, in addition to the Buffalo Academy for Visual and Performing Arts, had musical theater programs this year that were outstanding. They were Broadway junior plays. I don't know if any of you got out to see them, but next year, please put it on your, it is something to see because it is our littlest learners participating in theater, using vocabulary and space and developing social skills. You know the confidence it takes for a child to get on stage and perform, these plays were out of sight. Children with disabilities were on stage. You didn't know who was who. And that's the way that it should be. We had 23 of our schools doing that. 
I'm also proud to report that four of our high schools had a graduation rate better than 90%. Board member McKechn, I know you like that. I know you like to hear that. The district took a huge lift last year and it was huge with the implementation of that three-tier bell schedule. I see some eyes rolling in the room. It was a lot. <laughs> it was innovative, but it was born out of the community. The community got together and wanted to address an issue that we did not create. We didn't create a national bus shortage, bus driver shortage, but we wanted to be able to make sure that our children had maximized time in classrooms, shortened time on buses, all of that was important. And so we stepped out on faith and we changed the whole system and we implemented what used to be a two-tier bell schedule to a three, and I know it gave a lot of folks in this room some heartaches, some headaches, I know it did, but it was for the children and we all stepped up and we did it. And it allowed us to service public, charter and private schools with fewer drivers than we had during the pandemic. It was monumental. It allowed us equity again to have after school programming for all of our children who wanted to participate. We did not have that prior to implementing that schedule because when the pandemic hit and the bus driver shortage hit, it just wasn't feasible. But last year, we were able to do that. And was it perfect? Nope, it was not. But there was overall improvement. And another, you know, another heartache, headache last year, our Besser funds ended, huh, $90 million to reduce in one year. Difficult, difficult. But we went back out to the community, including our children, to hear from them, what is important in your schools? What do you need to keep? Who ever ask children when it comes to the budget what they want? We did. We did. And we listened. And we did it. We did it with minimal staff reductions. And our fund balance is strong. $396 million is strong. Board member Woods, I see you writing. I see you writing. I know this is near and dear to your heart. We did it. And how about last year, we saw a 62% decrease in the number of grievances. Now we deal with 12 unions in this district. That's a lot. I quoted the UAW president. That's one. We got 12, 12, 12, 12. And no, we don't always agree. Probably should be that way. Everybody got a job to do. I understand that. I do. But how do you get 62% of a decrease with respect, mutual respect of one another? Mutual respect. We try to work collectively. We listen. They listen. Sometimes, you know, things work out and sometimes they don't, but there is always mutual respect. And an area that doesn't get talked about enough is our adult education department. They are part of us, the adult education department. We're not just three Y through 12, we also have adults. And I need to share that this is a department that has met all, all, get the record right, they have met all New York State Education Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act benchmarks, every single one.
and they serviced more than 4,500 students. It's a lot of people. And for the first time in years, they held a graduation for their students who proudly walked across the stage to receive their general equivalency degrees. And if you've never been, never been to an adult education graduation, I would strongly suggest that you make it a point to attend this year. It is something to see the pride in the eyes of the students ranging from 18 until, until, and their families. I know we can because we are, because we are. We have a teacher residency program, I'm almost done, where we grow our own. And because we do value in this district teacher aides and assistance, because you all know in buildings, sometimes that's the group. That is the group that knows the community, they know the parents, they know the grandparents, and they do what's gotta be done. They hold it down. And so we have a program where we are encouraging them to go back to school and get their certification to become teachers. We are growing our own. We have partnered with Canisius University and this great campus to enable our teacher assistants and substitutes to earn a special education certification and a master's degree. And they get a stipend for $15,000 to do it. That's what we're doing. We are a restorative district that works with our children. And as a result, we saw a decrease of more than 500 school suspensions last year. For the record, we don't want to suspend children. We don't. We want all of our schools safe and secure. And our building staff is working tirelessly with children, constantly counseling, calling parents, referring them to counselors and social workers and psychologists and working with community partners, trying to find ways because what we know is Buffalo is not unique across this country after this pandemic, our children are traumatized and they are presenting with high knees. We gotta say it, it's the elephant in the room. I'm not gonna pretend that it's not the case, but we continue to work with them we continue to see the brilliance in them. We continue to believe in them. And as a result, even with all of the high needs being presented, we were able to decrease by 500, more than 500 suspensions of our children. And yeah. Now I'm gonna say it publicly, we want our children back we want our children back. In 2023, we lost 693 children to charter schools. That's a lot of kids. But you know what? In 2024, one year later, we only lost 271. So I'm Michelle Obama look. Mm -hmm. So we went from 693 to 271. I don't know, this is evidence that our families are gaining trust in the work that you all are doing and they are returning their children to Buffalo Public Schools. Our children deserve the best and that is exactly what I expect that we will provide to them. I had a chance to meet with our new teachers, I believe it was Monday, teachers who are new to the district. They are on fire, they already believe. I welcome them to the family and I'm saying to our schools, you know, as they come out to your buildings, be prepared to welcome them, show them the way, show them the way. We are moving from good to great. I am very pleased with the group of new teachers that we have coming into our district. So for this coming year, you know, superintendents, sometimes we can come up with some new things every year. Every year, something new, and it's not connected to what we did the year before. 
not this year. The main thing is the main thing. And we're going to keep it the main thing. Not taking you off task. We're going to continue to move this trajectory from good to great. We will stay the course. We will continue to engage our community and our parents. We will work together. We are moving in the right direction. There is no magic bullet. If you thought a Calvary was coming, it's not. We have to be the change that we want to see because there is no Calvary. So we'll continue with clear expectations. And we will continue to focus on academic excellence, emotional wellness of our children and staff, safety. We will continue to offer stellar professional development. We will continue implementing our cultural and linguistically responsive initiatives for our children. They have to see themselves. They have to see themselves in the curriculum. They have to. We will continue with differentiated learning. We will continue using the scientific proven reading strategies. In fact, our esteemed governor, Kathy Hochul, shout out to her team, will be visiting us this fall because she is interested in what the Buffalo Public Schools is doing in this area. So she's coming here. And our New York State Chancellor of Education, Ms. Dr. Lester Young, will be visiting us also this fall because he wants to hear about how our MBK, I just found out, that's why you ain't heard about it, because I just found out, I heard it. Okay, so, you know, they're coming here because we are now getting statewide attention, statewide attention. The, that village, that village is our story. And I just have to say, as I'm closing, um, I'm amongst family, right? So we can have an honest discussion. We're getting ready to embark on athletic season and we all love athletics. Remember I said, go Bills, go Bennett, go Hutch Tech, go all of our schools. We're getting ready to embark on athletic season and it brings some challenges and we gotta have some structure, we must because we want safety. These are family events. And so for this year, our plan is five points. We'll be conducting perimeter safety checks throughout the game. So our security team will be looking, you know, working the perimeter, walking around the perimeter, um, making sure that at concession stands, restrooms, all of those things, that all is good. They'll be doing sweeps around the perimeters. The second, we are requiring parents and or responsible adults to please attend the games with your children because your presence and watchful eye are needed. It's needed. This will help us with monitoring throughout the event. Three, we cannot have folks coming in and going out and coming in and going out. I need you to help message this. Get everything you need, come into the game and enjoy and enjoy because we can't, we can't allow that anymore. We just can't. We tried it. We tried it and the outcome hasn't been good, right? Deputy Wright, I mean, it just ain't good. Just ain't good. The fourth, <clears throat> we do have security systems in place. Everyone coming in, even me, will be going through Evolve scanners. Everybody, everybody. We want to keep everybody safe. That's the only stake we have in the game. So please, you know, message to people, don't come and get angry when we're asking them to go through the scanners. I'm going through the scanners. So everyone, we can't allow any contraband and anyone who refuses to go through won't be allowed to come into the game. And the final is really paying attention to seating. So we're trying very hard to allow our spectators who are visitors to be able to cheer their team on. And you know when this game's going on, they talk a little mess. I mean, we want them to be able to do that. And we want our home teams to be able to cheer. 
So we're trying to develop a system where they can be separate and everybody can cheer happily. And we're looking at how we dismiss from games instead of just saying, okay, the game is over. Everybody just go out at the same time. Maybe we allow our visitors to leave first and then we leave. So it's nothing difficult. I don't think it's anything um, extreme that we're asking. And it is for a good reason. We want these to be family events that are fun and enjoyable. So I have shared where we are. I've talked about where we're going. And my last comments are to parents. I said this at my first state of the schools and I'm gonna say it again. Parents, please note that your children will only stress if you stress. They will only be angry and anxious if you are angry and anxious. They feed on us as the adults. They get their cues from the adults. Work with your school principals, please, and assistant principals. And I'm asking my staff, work with your parents. We all only want the best. I want to thank you for joining us today. I'd like for you all to continue to stay encouraged and to be safe as we get ready to kick off this new school year. One more thing, we will have stop arm cameras on our buses. So please don't try to beat the bus and speed around the bus. It's about safety of our children. It's about safety for our children. Now, to kick off the new school year and to get you in the spirit, we got something a little special coming for you today. Some cheerleaders, I'm told, are here from Hutch Tech. Let's give it up for them. Have a wonderful day and know that it ain't no stopping us now. All right,